Welcome everyone to a Keeper of the Forest Jungle Educational. In this video, we're going to explain Keeper of the Forest in detail, showing jungle rotations as well as tips and tricks for the hero to optimize your gameplay. So let's get started. So I'm going to explain Keeper of the Forest abilities in detail. So his first ability here is Nature's Guidance. It costs uh, 70 mana. Target an allied unit or structure to apply 2, 3, 4, 5 health regeneration and armor, plus 3 to structures and camouflage. 1 second fade time and visibility with a 10% movement speed, or with plus 10% movement speed for 15, 30, 45, 60 seconds. Invisibility only lasts as long as they are near a tree and does not apply to structures. The next attack will apply a 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8 .1 second group and deal 40 magic damage per second if the unit with camouflage attacks out of stealth and is a non-illusion keeper of the forest. So it has 1000 range and a cooldown of 10 seconds. The second ability is Animate Forest, which has a mana cost of 130. Target a tree to animate four nearby trees. Trees have 19, 22, 25, 28 attack damage, 390, 460, 530, 600 health, and 300 movement speed. This ability allows you to have up to four animated trees. Animated trees are considered trees for all of your abilities. It has a range of 700 with a cooldown of 17 seconds. So the third ability, Strength in Numbers, is a passive ability. It says passively gains 5, 10, 15, 20 attack speed per animated tree within a 900 radius up to 5. Your attacks have a 20% chance reduced by 0.6 times multiplicative for each existing animated tree spawned by this ability or 100% versus stationary heroes to spawn an animated tree for 20 seconds with 170, 205, 240, 275 health 19, 22, 25, 28 attack damage and 300 movement speed illusions have 33% of the original proc chance to spawn an animated tree so there is a Staff of the Master effect here on the passive uh, Staff of the Master grants an active ability that enchants a tree granting 800 clear vision around the area. Okay, so now the fourth ability is Root. This is the main ability of the hero, of course, which has a mana cost of 200. Activate to immobilize, disarm, and inflict 125 magic damage per second on nearby enemies for two, three, four seconds and grants you unit walking for the duration. Also stuns everyone hit for 0 0.5 seconds. Effect also emanates from all of your nearby animated trees. Staff of the Master causes three animated trees to spawn next to each enemy hero hit. Animated trees have 600 health, 30 attack damage, 300 movement speed, and last 40 seconds. So another Staff of the Master effect added onto the root. And the root has a 900 radius with a cooldown of 2 minutes or 120 seconds. So that is uh, the Keeper of the Forest abilities. So now I want to talk about the strengths and the weaknesses of a Keeper of the Forest. Uh, so when you want to pick him up in your games and when you would not want to pick him up. So we'll first start with the strengths. So Keeper of the Forest is an early game tower pushing hero. He's very strong at pushing towers with his animate forest or, or his trees. Um, he is able to uh, split push as well. So he can not only tower push with his team, but he can also do it away from his team and the reason for that is he is a strength hero he is very tanky in the early game or early game stages uh, so the opponent would need to respond to you with two or more heroes to uh, to address your ability to push um, it is still going to be more effective to do it with your team however but he does have the option of being able to split push as well um, keeper of the forest is great for team fight control with lockdown he has this uh, amazing ultimate route which locks everybody down in place in the radius hit. Um, it stuns them for 0.5 seconds as the ability says it. It mobilizes and disarms them. They cannot attack or move and they are stuck there for two, three or four seconds. So he has a lot of lockdown um, when he has his ultimate available for team fights. A really very strong team fight hero. Um, he has uh, on his first ability, Nature's Guidance, he has the ability to medic towers with the nature's guidance he can give structures three health regen and three armor which is very strong at dealing with counter uh counter pushing against your opponent so he can uh, rejuvenate those towers and keep them standing for as long as possible 
So you can also put that on Raxes. So any structure, you can give it that Nature's Guidance buff, and they will get armor and regen. So very strong. Uh, he is also great for team sustain and armor. So the Nature's Guidance, I talked about it, has a 10 second cooldown. At the level 4, it lasts for 60 seconds. You can essentially, over time, give this buff to all of your teammates. You can make sure that everyone in your team has 5 health regeneration and armor um, on themselves as a buff, lasting for 60 seconds. Very, very powerful. Also grants invisibility while near trees. Very uh, important to note. So the invisibility, it allows for not only you, who can um, attack out of the invis and root, uh, temporarily, but it can also give your allies that invisibility to set up ganks or survive. Now, they do not get the root, only you do. And something I want to show you guys is that in the last patch, uh, we actually had a nerf to Keeper's uh, root duration on his Nature's Guidance. It was originally 2.4 seconds down to 1.8 now. So it used to be even stronger. So this will make Keeper of the Forest great for setting up invisibility ganks. Uh, even when he does not have his root available. When he does have his root available, you can essentially root the same person three times. So you would root, you would wait for the cooldown of your nature's guidance to come back up, root them again, and you can root them with the ultimate either at the end or in between. So very, very strong for setting up invisible ganks. So those are the strengths of Keeper of the Forest. Let's now talk about some of his weaknesses. So he is weak against heavy AoE or area of effect anti-push style of heroes. So heroes that can address his tree pushing capabilities. So heroes like Draconis come to mind. He can uh, use his Draconic Flight to uh, give structures damage reduction as well as the Dragon Flame to kill your animated trees very, very quickly with that DOT that he has um, on his Fiery Barrage. Something like an Alonia, who's a spam heavy spellcaster hero that's great at defending pushes. Something like a Midas or a Bubbles also come to mind. They have great anti-push style of abilities. So if you play against these style of heroes, it becomes more difficult to push towers in the early and mid game as a Keeper of the Forest. Um, another weakness of Keeper of the Forest would be AoE purge style effect heroes and self purge style enemies. So uh, the big one that comes to mind is Monarch. He has a very big AoE dispel in Cleansing Wind. He can remove that root from um, everyone hit in the area. Very, very strong counter pick against the Keeper of the Forest. Um, if you're against a Monarch, it is more likely than not not a good idea to pick up a Keeper of the Forest just simply due to that Cleansing Wind. Another hero that comes to mind is the Electrician. <clears throat> he has Cleansing Shock where he can Cleansing Shock himself and allies to remove that root effect. Um, very, very strong to purge, just like the Monarch, that root effect off of um, several people. Um, some more heroes with the self purge effects would be heroes like Silhouette. She can use her shadow to um, dispel that root effect. Gemini can use fire and ice to split into dog form, which breaks the debuff of the root. So um, if you see these style of heroes, very, very difficult to uh, lock them down with the root from the Keeper of the Forest. Um, another weakness would be if you play against carries that like to build both a Geometer's Bane and a Shrunken Head as core items. So something that comes to mind would be the Moon Queen. The Moon Queen loves to build a Geometer's Bane into a Shrunken Head. She has two ways to deal with root because eventually, as a Keeper of the Forest, you're going to want to build into a Resto Stone. Resto Stone is very, very powerful on a Keeper of the Forest to have two roots to more or less essentially win you a team fight with those two big ultimates. And if you play against a carry that likes to build both a Geometer's Bane and a Shrunken, it will nullify your effectiveness for locking down that carry. Um, more, one of the weaker uh weaknesses i would say so not so much of a big deal for you to play against but it is something worth mentioning are heroes with invisibility detection so heroes like the pestilence he has the swarm on a 10 second cooldown note that is the same as nature's guidance so he can use the swarm to spot out uh all of your allies that you are putting 
uh, in invisible with the extra armor from that nature's guidance, the swarm gives minus armor as well as invisibility detection, more or less a hard counter to the spell. The pestilence very, very good against the Keeper of the Forest, especially if he's able to pick up a staff where that becomes AoE. Um, another hero would be something like a Geomancer. He has the Geostalk ability, he's able to go invisible himself, and he's able to spot out those invisibility ganks that you're trying to set up with that Geostalk. So great at spotting out the information going up against a hero like Keeper of the Forest. So these are not the end of the world style of counter picks, but something worth mentioning as a weakness um, to picking up a Keeper of the Forest. <clears throat> So those are the strengths and weaknesses of Keeper. Um, the strengths being when you would want to look to pick up a Keeper and the weaknesses when you would want to try to avoid picking up a Keeper of the Forest. So now that we talked about uh, his abilities in detail as well as his strengths and weaknesses, I think it's time we get excuse me, into a practice mode game where we can start showing you guys the jungle rotation. Excuse me. So we're going to go ahead and pick our Keeper of the Forest here. We're going to pick the Keeper of the Desert, or as I like to call him, the Cactus Skin, because he has the best looking tree buddies. Another one that I would like uh, to also pick, uh, or that I would recommend, is the Keeper of the Blossoms, the Cherry, Cherry Blossom Skin. Very nice looking tree dogs. We're going to go ahead and pick up that skin, or pick up uh, that avatar, and we're going to ready up. We're going to get into the game. Uh, first things first, we make sure we start with the 603 starting gold. We're going to spec our animate forest as the level 1. We're going to buy uh, these items at the start. And we are going to spawn trees here. We send the trees into the jungle. We send our hero back to get mana. So we have to spawn where there are trees. There are not many spots in the base. Uh, we're going to keybind our hero and the trees to one, the trees to two. We're going to individually bind, uh, hold on here, my throat is actually <clears throat> feeling very clogged all of a sudden. We're going to bind one to three, one to four, one to five. We're going to scout out uh, all the different ramps like we did in the last educational with uh, the Warbeast. This time we have a little bit more. Uh, minions to work with here. We bind this one to a six. So we have three, four, five, six. Uh, I should have been sent sending my hero here into the jungle. Um, so we scout all the ramps here. Very important, we're not going to cut any trees like we do with some of the other junglers, and that's because we're going to want to spawn trees with our anime forest. So we save 100 gold to make sure we have a uh, Ward of Revelation money in case somebody comes and blocks our jungle camps. We're going to go ahead and send the trees uh, back into the jungle. We see nobody's coming. And uh, we will start on the medium camp. And uh, with Keeper of the Forest, the jungle rotation actually depends on the spawns we get. So we'll have to wait and see what we get. But uh, it is not going to be always the same every single game. Some games will go to easy camp. Some games will go to hard camp. So, we'll start here on the medium camp, make sure not to block it, of course. We're going to do, uh, we're going to eat a tree and start tanking the camp here. So we got a Vulture Lord on the hard camp, this is very important, we're going to actually do the hard camp next. So if we got a Vagamon or a Catman, we would go to the easy camp and stack it. But, now that we got a good spawn, we get to showcase the even more powerful uh, rotation. So we're going to go over to here, and start tanking. Tank with our hero as much as possible um, so that our little tree buddies can stay alive because they will die very quickly. I lost one there. We might lose this one soon. Um, we're going to be building into a Ring of the Teacher uh, as our first item. We get our passive level 2. We have one tree buddy left. It's almost dead. We're going to spawn new tree buddies uh, with our anime forest here. We have enough gold for our Ring of the Teacher. So we will send that to us. And we will go back to the medium here. Always like to keybind our trees. Try to micro them when possible. Um, they are very slow and very weak, so it is kind of difficult to micro them, but um, we do our best. Okay, so we will get the level 3 now. We will get level 2 of the strength in numbers. 
And okay, so we got a Catman here. We're gonna want to send only three. I sent four by accident there, but uh, we still have four charges on the Animate Forest. That's very good. We're gonna kill this Catman as fast as possible. So luckily, we got lots of trees from our E there to kill this cat very quickly. And with Keeper of the Forest, you want to be killing mediums and hard camps as much as possible. Um, we're going to spawn new trees here. Uh, we'll, we'll actually go to the easy camp, but we're going to try to avoid this camp as much as possible. But for the sake of the rotation, we have another 50 seconds. Uh, so we're going to kill all of the camps. We uh, again want to work with the four camps. We want to leave these two camps to our uh, short lane to utilize pulling. We'll go to the... Uh, Medium here, we're going to hit level 4 by about 4.30, a little bit later than that, but close. We're going to get our Q, level 4, and this we're going to start to max out the Nature's Guidance now. This is the uh, spell we're going to want to max out. We only send 3 to splash the uh, ability. We're going to try to kill this as fast as possible. Uh, Vagabonds are the worst creep camp, so it's going to most likely get its spell off once again. Luckily, we didn't take too much damage on our hero. We're able to resummon, and we, now we can use our mana pot as we're missing a lot of mana. No, we didn't get this camp to respawn, but that's okay. Um, we're not going to farm stacks as a keeper of the forest, uh, especially on the hard camp. So we have enough gold for our punch dagger. We're going to be building into ghost marchers as our first item after the ring of the teacher. Um, that is going to be our timing for when we're going to start leaving the jungle and ganking. So we're going to put two points now in the nature's guidance. So we have two, one, two skill build at level five. Uh, and we are going to be maxing this next with the root at level six. So I think it's uh, level eight. We're going to have the max nature's guidance. So we continue jungling here. Uh, we should be able to kill the easy camp as well before the four minutes. Now notice I did not camp the rune. You, you definitely can camp the rune um, when you see fit. Uh, I could also skip this easy camp and go camp the rune, but I do want to get level 6 as fast as possible. So I would be communicating with my support and my mid laner um, who's going to get the rune. I make sure this uh, respawns in time. I only have two trees up, so I can actually respawn here just so we farm a little bit faster. We have 500 gold, we buy our, our marchers, uh, and then the next 500 gold will be going towards our punch dagger. So we're doing pretty well here. We're almost level six uh, at 420. Uh, okay, we got a Catman spawn here. We only want to send three creeps in. I know my micro is a little sloppy, but I got it to work just fine there. We're going to kill this uh, Catman as fast as possible so it doesn't get the spell up again. We spec our root at level six. We're down to one tree so we can again respawn the trees. So if we can avoid Catmans and Vagabonds, uh, as much as possible, we won't really be needing to use our mana too much. We got another Catman spawn, unfortunately. Uh, so something something that we could do as well uh, is we just take our hero and one tree and send it here. And then we could try to uh, not proc the Catman. So we could farm it like this. It does take a little bit more micro, but this is uh, a little bit more efficient. Unfortunately, the creeps moved there, so I got it to smash, and that was not what we wanted to do. We'll have to spawn new trees. Um, but again, we're jungling pretty well. We're almost level 7. This camp uh, we killed in the spawn, probably because we weren't paying attention. We have enough gold for our... Uh, actually, we should farm this one. Uh, it, it's really difficult to... Uh, because the tree, tree dogs are really slow to get it to not use its spell. It's probably going to go off again here. We just kill it too slow. So you can, you guys can kind of see why the uh, Vagabonds are the worst ones. The Catmans are second worst, but they're not as hard to deal with. Get my Q again there. I'll probably send myself a health pot and a mana pot. If I was in the middle of the jungle, um, I would just go buy it from the shop there. But uh, this is more or less the timing where we want to um, stop the jungling and start setting up ganks. So I would use my regen. Um, I would have level 3 of my nature's guidance now. I can use it and I can set up a gank in either the bottom lane or the mid lane. Um, we can also buy ourselves a TP, which is what I should have done before sending the courier. And if our suicide or offlaner gets dove, we can, uh, or we, we, we can even just set up a gank with them if they have enough levels and we feel that we can get kills with them. So we would use our invis here, make sure not to reveal with the tree dogs. We'll pretend that this uh, creep is the enemy. We would walk up, root them, 
attack them, use our ultimate, and then we would have our invis again for another route if they did not die. So that is how you would set up a gank with the Keeper of the Forest. Um, you can always look to push towers. From this point forward, uh, you would want to build into a chalice as the next item. So we could start buying pieces to our chalice. And once we get the chalice, we more or less have perma health and mana upkeep with the nature's guidance and the chalice. Uh, but that's that's pretty much going to do it for the jungling part. Uh, I showed you guys the key bindings. Uh, so now we can talk about um, different item builds that we would want to go on the Keeper of the Forest. So um, I know you guys might look at this guide and you might say, well, Wig, your guide says to max uh, anime forest um, and to go armor boots and astrolabe. Uh, this is true. The guide is a little bit outdated, and that's more so because the nature's guidance got changed um, in uh, a few patches ago. So this play style of the Keeper of the Forest has changed now. He is more of this uh, ganker style of jungler. Um, once you get the ghost marchers, you kind of just stop jungling. You start going with the team a lot, setting up ganks and tower pushes. And you don't really look to uh, have this kind of a play style. So after the nature's guidance, so let me just put a couple of levels here on my hero. After the nature's guidance, we're going to max out the strength in numbers, and then we're going to max out the animate forest at the end. So that will actually be the last skill that we are going to max out. So the playstyle has completely changed here on the Keeper of the Forest. Um, so again, apologies for the guide being a little bit outdated, um, but we're going to build Ghost Marchers every single game, Ring of the Teacher at the start, into a Chalice. Um, so here, let's pull up the item spawner. Uh, we have Chalice, so this will give us perma upkeep for using Nature's Guidance, not only on ourselves but on our teammates. We want to make sure that they always have the armor as well and that they get um, the health regeneration if they are low. Um, so items that I would look to buy, um, I would look to buy Abyssal Skull. Um, you can more or less buy this every single game. It's great for uh, the tower pushing that you're going to want to do with your team. So ideally, around the uh, seven to nine minute mark, we're going to push these two towers if possible. And if we get to around the 12 to 17 minute mark time frame, we can look to steal the enemy Congor or do our own Congor with the Abyssal Skull. So very, very powerful for grouping up with our team and doing team objectives. Um, if I want to go for a head on pushing style of uh, item build with lots of fighting involved um, i would look to buy items such as uh, barrier idol um, into a resto stone so with these items abyssal skull barrier idol resto stone i am looking to head on push into my enemy um, i'm going to be frontlining for my team i'm very tanky with lots of armor lots of magic armor and I'm going to be wanting to team fight as much as possible with my team. So this is a very strong build for team fighting. Um, uh, another style of build we could do is we can go into a portal key uh, with something like a, uh, a resto stone. And what this does is this is going to be an item build that if your team lacks initiation and you need more lockdown, uh, you're going to want to have a portal key to be able to get in position to initiate for your team um, and then have the rest of stone for the two ultimates. You can also look to build into items such as a sheep stick. So with the rest of stone, you have uh, the two roots and two sheep sticks. Um, you can also buy a hell flower. We wouldn't have both the ring of the teacher and a uh, abyssal skull anyway. Uh, we would have a hell flower. So now we have lots of disables. You would probably only buy one of them, not both. But for the sake of things, this is if your team lacks initiation and lockdown. This is an item build that you would want to go. Now, with the portal key, something I want to mention is that uh, due to the radius on your route being so large, as you can see here, I can root everything around me. Pretty much your entire screen gets rooted. Um, you do not really need a portal key to get in position for a route. So it is not a not a very necessary item that you uh, you need um, to buy so this is a very uh, more so situational item uh, if your team as I said lacks uh, lockdown 
so another item build we could go here we'll get rid of the portal key um, another item build we can go is um, staff of the master uh, with something like a resto stone so this item build we are more or less going to be a walking ultimate so we are going to have two roots. So there's one, and then there's two. I have to use the refresher because the rest of the stone is disabled. But what I want to point out about the staff is that we get this ability to uh, place these uh, wards on the trees. They enchant the trees. So I can go around here placing all these uh, all these eyes. Just so gonna speed it up here and show you guys. So we can have unlimited eyes. And if I take off the auto refresh, put it back down to normal game speed, you will see that the cooldown is one minute. So if I look around here, you guys can see all the vision I get. There, this is with Fog of War activated. So if I go over here, we have no vision. If I go over here, look at all the vision these animated trees are giving me. And the opponent cannot see these animated trees. So unless they have a way to destroy trees, or they are very aware of what you are doing, uh, where you are placing them, they will not know that you have these animated trees. So a very powerful effect to the Staff of the Master. And also, uh, something I want to, not an item actually, we want to do Entity Spawner, Hellborn, let's spawn a Hellborn Arachna here, we'll make him max level. Um, so with the Staff of the Master, if I root him, three animated trees will spawn at him. And this will happen for every enemy hero that you hit with the Staff of the Master, they will spawn three trees. So some little extra damage. They last for, um, I believe it's 45 or 40 seconds. So um, you can even use them once they're, uh, once you're done fighting to push the tower with them. So I can move them over and push the tower. So this is, uh, wh when you would go the Staff of the Master with a Resto Stone, uh, when you would want to pick up a Staff, is when you expect the game to go very, very long, and you want to more or less be a walking ultimate, and you want to have this extra vision provided from your Staff effect. So long games, um, a, a expectation of a long game, um, Staff of the Master, very good. Um, and of course, you could always look to upgrade that into Legacy and upgrade somebody on your team if they have a good Staff effect. So. Um, this is not an item build for every situation, but it does uh, have viability and it does have its purpose. So that is the staff build uh, for Keeper. Um, there's one more build I want to talk about. So I went over three different style of item builds. Uh, one for head on pushing, one for if you lack initiation, and one for uh, long when you expect long games and you want to just be more or less a walking ultimate. Um, the last one is going to be, so we would not have an Abyssal Skull for this one. We would have, uh, hold on, I need to do Entity, or Item Spawner. So we would have a Chalice, as always. We would have a Ring of the Teacher. Um, we would not upgrade that into uh, an Abyssal Skull, or we actually could, but um, this is going to be more of a DPS style of Keeper build. We're going to start with an Elder Parasite, go into something like a Brutalizer uh, with a Shrunken Head. Um, and then eventually we would build into something like a hyper crown. So this, as I said, this is a DPS style of um, of item build. We'll give the Arachna a heart here. We'll just say he's got 2,500 HP. So we would invis ourselves. We go over to fight him. We pop our elder. We start beating on him. We maybe get a bash. We root. And as you can see, I'm doing a lot of damage. So Arachna, okay, he almost dies there, but. Um, you guys get the point. This is a right-click style build. We get the buff from the hyper count as well. So uh, with the strength and numbers, we get a lot of attack speed. That coupled with the Elder Parasite. And then we buy these proc style items, the Basher and the Hyper Crown, the Lightning and the Bashes. So we have lots of attack speed, lots of procs. We transition more into a DPS style of hero. Um, this is the item build I would least recommend. Uh, the only situations you would really want to do something like this is if you don't have um, a scaling hero in your team for whatever reason you should always have a scaling hero in your team when you're playing a keeper of the forest so this item build doesn't really have that much use but as you can see it does uh, work to some degree you can right click very efficiently so this is a fourth uh, style of item build that you could opt for but as I pointed out not the one I would recommend um, so I explained to you guys um, the late game 
item build choices, or I want to explain to you guys the late game item build choices. Um, so situationally, we would want to pick pick up items like Sheepstick and Hellflower, and that would be if we want to disable um, these style of heroes like Silhouette Gemini that can easily get out of our roots, heroes that have shrunken heads, if we want to disable them from getting off their shrunkens. If we play against something like a Monarch who's going to remove our ultimate off of everybody, we want to make sure to have a way to focus that hero down and prevent them from countering our roots. So we pick up items like the Hellflower and the Sheepstick to deal with those shrunken head carries and those supports that can save their carries. So that guarantees our root has a lot of effectiveness. Um, Demonic Breastplate is a great item um, to scale your team against physical damage op uh, opposing carries. So it gives armor to everybody. It's great for tower pushing as well. So Demonic, a fantastic item. Um, Barrier Idol as well. Um, great for high ground pushing and great against heavy AoE. Uh, magic uh, centric opposing teams so these items are very situational to the game you're gonna have to read um, into what your opponent is kind of doing to counteract your your game plan so uh, barrier idol and demonic situationally very good sheepstick and hell flower more so uh, late game style of items situationally very good um, storm spirit is an item that you are less likely to buy but it has some uses um, if your carry or your core hero in your team is struggling to survive team fights and your support is not able to get um, these kinds of items to help protect them you can always look to uh, play a more defensive style of keeper uh, with these team aura items and something like a storm spirit um, because you're going to be giving them armor with the nature's guidance and regen and in, you can have the storm spirit to help protect them as well in the team fights so a little bit of a more situational item but uh, something to consider if it's something that your team lacks so that will be the late game item build decisions that you're going to want to go for um, I talked to you guys about how to farm the hard camps uh, with the creeps to not trigger <coughs> trigger the uh, abilities to the best of your uh, or excuse me to trigger their abilities to the best of your ability um, but sometimes they end up casting the vagabonds are going to be the biggest nuisance for us the catmans the next ones if you get skeleton kings vulture lords and even minotaurs are manageable um, you can farm the hard camps earlier than later and we always want to be farming mediums and hard camps as much as possible um, because we're very strong at doing that the easy camp we want to try to avoid it as much as possible because it gives us the less uh, the least golden experience <clears throat> So another tip and trick of the hero is constantly setting up those invis ganks with the nature's guidance. Um, you can put it on your teammates, but they will not get the root, only you will. So um, the play style of the Keeper of the Forest has kind of adapted over time. He is now more of this uh, invis style of ganker with still having that tower pushing uh, team fighting presence that the hero has always had. So. Uh, that's going to do it here for the uh, educational here, doing the jungle rotations and tips and tricks of the hero. Um, so if you enjoyed this educational, please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will later be doing a part two to the Keeper of the Forest jungle educational, where I'm going to pull up a replay or two. We're going to analyze uh, and explain my decisions that I made throughout the match. So just like I did in the previous educational. So um, I hope you guys did enjoy the educational. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.